let's try it again so we uh, we were in mark uh, 7 9 to 16 and uh, yeah, talking about the Pharisees, Jesus had an answer for the Pharisees. They were picking him up about the hand washing issue, but Jesus said, "Well, actually, you know what? There are many Pharisees are always wrong. They're always the bad people. It's like, oh, you know, it's like, well, Pharisees are always the people we preach about. And we, we take them as the bad example. Nobody ever sort of says, oh, you know what, I'm a Pharisee. Unless they are maybe from that tradition. I don't think there are any Pharisees left today. But we have, we, there, are, there are Orthodox Jews who maybe have certain amount of overlap with some of the things as a believer is could I actually be a Pharisee without realising because the Pharisees, were, they, they didn't realise they were wrong. They needed the Lord Jesus Christ to tell them they were wrong. And actually everyone else thought they were right. And actually they were surrounded with other people who told them they were right. And there was no question in their mind that they were right. Or wrong. It's a good question, isn't it? It's a healthy question for us. You know, could I actually be a Pharisee without realising? It's interesting as well. I um, I read something yesterday. It was a uh, a blog from uh, I don't know the person themselves, but uh, I I know their sister, and I, because their sister had shared this blog, I was able to. But it was interesting reading it because they are very politically correct, they're very woke. And you could see that the, the whole tone of this was they were falling over themselves not to appear as a Pharisee. Oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be one of these judgmental men. But then, to the degree that they actually were saying, well, these, these are things I will never say to people. But some of them are scripture. In other words, it got to the degree that actually scripture had become a bad thing. To sell, tell somebody that they were a sinner. Oh, I would never be that judgmental. Oh, that's what the Pharisees do. Think, wow, you know, it's, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. That actually, oh, you know, it's like... Uh, I, I would never say those things to me. I, these are the things that have wounded me. For uh, People said to me in the church and they wounded me. These are the things that people said to me and I, I, I didn't want to go back to that church again. But you know what? If it's the word of God, praise God. If the word of God offends us, maybe it's accomplishing something. Now we can stand and we can shake our fist at God and say how terrible it is. And all these traditional Christian, all these churches, all churches have done some terrible things to me. And you think, yeah, and, and you know, people do. There are, there are people who do say terrible things uh, uh, in churches because they're sinners. And you know what? We all have to guard our heart whether we could become a Pharisee. But the thing that I, I really... Uh, picked up on from
from reading this passage was that that making the word of God of none effect through your traditions. Wow. We have to be very careful that we don't make the word of God of none effect by our tradition. You know, we have to be very careful that we that we are are keeping the word of God fresh, keeping the word of God alive, not making the word of God of none effect. You know, we love the grace of God, we preach the grace of God, we promote the grace of God. God is gracious and he accepts everyone. But the point is that actually he doesn't accept everyone to the degree that actually sin does not matter anymore. And sin is not dealt with anymore. But he, he welcomes everyone to the place of healing. We were talking actually, funnily enough, just before we started um, to this morning, Nigel had a, uh, had a question. And we were thinking about how Jesus actually healing people. He healed the multitudes. Thousands of them. Time and time again people came to him for healing. He didn't turn any one of them away. But he didn't leave any one of them as they were. Wow. That's a good point actually. I hadn't planned to mention that, but it sort of it sort of came up this morning. But yeah, it's like wow, God doesn't leave people as they are, because actually our our previous state was desperately wicked, and we come to a God who is able to heal, who is able to transform, and who does this, and who can't does this you know it's like you say well I, 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 I'm still failing I you know we're in a process sometimes that that healing takes a long time sometimes God does a long-term work in progress in fact he always does we're always being renewed we're always being uh, encouraged we're always being taken further by the grace of God but there's a danger a danger that could become an excuse for us I know that there's times in my own life when I've done that I, well I, people just have to give me grace in this have we ever thought that have we ever said that oh God you know people people will just have to understand and give me grace in this and you think do you know what no we've been given grace by God we've been given the grace of God that is completely sufficient for our situation. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't have grace for that situation today. I don't. I don't have the capacity for that situation today. You know, we, we have to be careful with it. It can become our tradition. Oh, I've, I got. I got used to saying this. I got used to saying, you know what? I'm a sinner. I, you know, I, I I'm a sinner saved by grace. Yeah. God's chosen one. You're living in victory. You say, oh, I don't perceive living in victory. No, but you know what the Word of God says? We are living in victory. Don't make the Word of God of none effect by your tradition. It's a danger we can slip into. We don't even mean to. We never intend to. Nobody ever intends to be a Pharisee. You know. <laughs> I never intend to be a Pharisee but often I find that that I could be it's healthy for us to question ourselves uh, uh, often we, we find that we could be wow yeah 
Yes, we're a sinner, but as our identity is not in sin anymore. Wow. Yes, I uh, yes I fail. Oh, you know what? Uh, we'll we'll get round the law. We'll say you know it's Corbin. You know it, it's a gift. It's a, it, this is our tradition. This is our way of making us able to fulfil something that we couldn't fulfil, and we fulfilled it in the flesh. Now. That's not possible. We need to be spiritual. Oh, but we can just do it this way. We can just get on and do it this way. No, actually, we need a divine God to do it in us. Wow. Wow, yeah. Oh, but you know what? I, yes, I, I'm a poor, miserable sinner. I, 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 this is my sin. This is the sin that I, I've experienced for, for a long time. But actually, you know what? Ephesians 2.19 Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Oh. Yeah, well, well yeah, well, that, that's true too. I, uh, I'm a sinner. I, uh, I, I'm a sinner. I fail. And you just have to put that. Actually, no. Oh, that's just the way I am. Uh, no. You're a fellow citizen. Wow. A fellow citizen with the saints. And you're of the household of God. This is who we are today. You know what? We need to get the right perspective in these things. Am I, am I, am I, am I doomed to failure? Am I doomed to repeat the, the failures of my past? Or am I actually something better, something greater? Seated in a heavenly kingdom. Wow. Oh, you know what? Uh, oh, I, I'm, uh, I'm a failure. I, I, I've always had this problem. And I probably always will have this problem. That's it. I mean, maybe we know this scripture. Maybe we can we can quote it. First Peter two nine. But you know what? Remember it. Encourage yourself in it when you're struggling, when you when it's difficult, when the temptation comes, or when the everyday mundanity is dragging us down. It's oh, 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 I can't do with this again. Oh, you know. No, actually. Remember that. A chosen generation. Out of all the generations God chose you. A royal priesthood. Wow. A holy nation. A peculiar people. You're set apart. You're distinct from the world. Your identity is not in the world anymore. Your identity is not in your past. Or in your, your habits. Or in your failings. Or in your so, oh, this is my personality trait. No, it doesn't have to be. We have a new beginning. We have a new identity. Oh, I don't have strength for this today. You do. Well, I don't have the grace for this. You do. Yes, grace is always sufficient. And it's like, well, we have a choice. It's a choice. You know, it's like we have to we have to bring ourselves back, we have to wake ourselves up and say, Could I be could I be making the, the word of God of none effect here? Wow, could I be robbing the word of God of its power? Wow. We have everything that is sufficient for our victory. Oh, but I got offended about this. You know, I, I'm happy to live as a victim because of, of my condition. I'm happy. I, everyone's against me. Now, I 
happy to say these things. Nobody would ever dream of saying. This is not, this is not in our vocabulary. I'm a hypocrite. Wow. But you know what? We need to be careful. We need to keep God's words fresh. I remember years ago, Dr. See, Dr. Stephen saying something that shocked me at the time. He said, you know, sometimes we can we can quote scripture, and the pastor is 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 saying something from the pulpit, and we can finish the scripture. With oh, yeah, I know that. I know that. I know that. He says, but we have to be very careful that that doesn't become familiarity. Mm. And you're thinking, wow. I mean, there is a point where, my, yeah, if we, if we love God's, God's word, we get to know it. And we know it well. That's a beautiful thing. That's a wonderful thing. But actually, there's a danger that we become so familiar with God's word that we rob it of its power. Because it's no longer fresh. Because it's, uh, you know, for God's sake, of the world that, he, that you know, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, I know this, I know this scripture, oh, yeah, it's like, oh, I, I know how it ends. Yeah, whosoever believes in him. Uh, okay, fine, you know, but actually, no, it's, it's dramatic. It's life changing. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I can trot it off, I can say it, I can quote it off my heart. But actually, do I know it? That there's no condemnation. Wow, do I live it? That there's no condemnation. Wow. You know, it's one thing to know the scripture and to be able to quote it. But it's like, wow. The Pharisees, they knew the scripture. They could quote the scripture. <laughs> the Jewish uh, rabbis had to learn it off by heart. Had to know every letter of the law. To the degree that they would knock a nail in. You've probably heard this before. Knock a nail into the scroll. And they would have to say every place that it go, goes through. Where, what, what, is, what is written there. They would have to know it that well. Like the, oh I can, I can tell you what this, what this is. And where it would be. Where it would, where it would be the next. And it's like. Yeah that's fine to know it. But they miss something. Deuteronomy 6.4 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thy heart. Wow. You know, it's interesting. Yes, they, they had the knowledge, the Pharisees, they had the knowledge. They memorized the scripture, they knew it. Off by heart, they could quote it. They had it tied to the doorpost, they had it tied to their forehead. But God said, now love it. Love it with all your heart, with all your, your strength, with all your soul, with all your emotions. With every part of yourself, with every part of your inner being, love God's word. Because if you love God's word, it makes a difference. If it's a love relationship, not just a duty relationship. If it's a love relationship, not just a traditional relationship. And when I say a traditional relationship, you know, we can get into a traditional relationship if we're not careful. Oh, this is what I do. I'm a Christian. I, I know this. I know this is how I, I, I live my life. It's like, no. It needs to be low. It needs to be fresh. All the time. We need to check ourselves. And encourage ourselves. And remind ourselves. To keep it fresh. All the time. Psalm 119.97 it says. 
Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Wow. Love God's word. Coming back. Love into the relationship. It shall be a health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones in Proverbs 2, 8. Wow, health to the navel. Think about that, the navel. What is our navel? Oh, yeah, it's like something to gaze at when we're a bit <laughs> introspective. No, no that's, not, that's not what it means here. It's the connection to our parent, isn't it? Originally. It's the original way that a, that a baby is connected to the parent, to the mother. That lifeline. And in one sense you think, wow, yeah, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Yeah. Psalm 19.10, it says, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. This is God's word. Yeah, quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4.12 quick and powerful, sharp. It needs to be in our Get back and see what it means. See see what what it, it what it's accomplished in my life. Thinking about this the other day and reminding about remind, reminding myself about this the other day, what we are redeemed from. Colossians 1.14, it tells us that we're redeemed from sin. Or our sins. And that the word there is, is hamartia, which it means uh, missing the mark, falling short. We're, we're redeemed from that. In, in, in Ephesians 1.17 it says that redeemed from sins there again. But it's a different word. There. Then it's uh, para, maraton, I think. Paraptomaton. Sounds like a bit like a tomato. But anyway, uh, there we go. Uh, paraptomaton. But that means... How did I do that? Why did I do that? Why, why did I do that? But we're redeemed from the transgressions. Now, transgression, even in the English, has that 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 um, that idea of crossing, doesn't it? Trans to cross over. Uh, you know, it's like transgression means crossing a line, and it's like there's a line there. And we just we we got over we've overstepped the mark. It's funny, isn't it? You know, you've got the sin sins that is like the fall of George at the mark, <laughs> and uh, and uh, tra transgressions, which is overstepping the mark in the other direction, deliberately going the wrong way. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've gone too far there. Yeah. And in Titus two fourteen, it says that we're redeemed from our iniquities. Now, iniquity is like twisting God, which is exactly what the Pharisees used to do here. And it's exactly what they were doing with this lure of Corban, the gift. Oh, you know what? You don't have to look after your mother, mother and father anymore. If you give this, this donation to the temple, that absolves you of it. And it was a way of twisting and, and manipulating God's law so that you could get round it. And that's the, the, the sense the word iniquity has it in, 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 the, in the Bible. But we're redeemed from that. We're redeemed from that. We're redeemed from our own vanities. First Peter 1 Peter 1.18 as well. We're redeemed from our own bodies. Wow, do we need, need to be redeemed from our own flesh? Yes, we do. Uh, that's in, in Romans uh, 8.23. And in Galatians 3.13, we're redeemed from the curse of the law. Wow. It's good to know these things. It's good to remind ourselves of these things. Keep it fresh. 
go over these things, remind ourselves again, we're redeemed, we're bought back, we're, we're, we're taken out of these things. We're not the same people anymore. Oh, but it's me, it's me and my old ways, this is that. You know, and I get offended if somebody challenges me. And I get offended if somebody says, and I get offended if somebody doesn't give me, give me grace. No, you're redeemed from it all. From sins, trespasses, transgressions, iniquities, vanity, your own body, and the curse of the law. Redeemed from everything. Bought back, bought with a price. The Lord Jesus Christ. Those are promises. That's what it means. Redemption. I'm under new ownership. The company I worked for a few years back was taken over. And uh, it was interesting for me because it meant I had a new boss. Um because the the boss that I had was part of one group and when the uh, company was bought out he went, he decided he was going to stay with that group and they had brought in somebody else to be the manager of our office but in one sense she's going to think well what's that got to do with anything well it's a very good illustration isn't it, mm. of redemption mm. the company was bought by another group another company and what was it? It meant there was a new boss in control, a new headship. And it's the same for us in our lives. You know, we've been, we've been redeemed out of all of these things. Oh, but I'm struggling with my I'm struggling with my sin today. I, you know, I always have this problem, and, and actually, you shouldn't. You, you know, you just have to. This is you just have to live with it. This is who I am. No, you're not, because you've built, you're under new ownership, and there's a new management in control. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, but you know, I, I can't cope with this today. You know, it's like, no, you're 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 redeemed from that. Well, you know what? If I can just get round this, you know, I, I'm going to be very good. But I'm, I, 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 you know, I, I just if I can just do it this way, I'm not. I'm, I'm technically, I'm not actually breaking the law here. No, that's iniquity. You're just bending the law. But you've been redeemed from that. Oh, but I didn't even realise I was doing something wrong. Well, you've been redeemed from that as well. It's whatever it is. We're, we're made new. Wow. Mix faith with the word. Remember that? Four, two. Yeah, the word of God, it didn't profit them. Why? Uh, for unto, unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Yeah, mix faith with it. Mix faith with it. And just bring it out and just say, well, this is this is the word of God. And it, I'm going to mix faith with it. I'm going to say it applies for me today. So that, that, that scripture about redemption, it applies to me. Oh, but I failed again since I was redeemed. You know what? You're still under new ownership. Oh, but I, 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 you know. Bring it to the cross. Come to the Saviour. Come to the God of all grace. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. He's just waiting for us to. Like, uh, I saw something the other day that it doesn't matter how how far away we've strayed from from god uh, coming back only one step and it's true you know it's like we we we, we go we wander away we, we we get distracted we allow other things to become more important but it's like no there's that instant connection why because we've been bought with a price 
and God desires for us to, to come back. And it's that love connection. We love the word of God. It's not a burden to us. It's not, it's not oh, it's rules and regulations like the Pharisees said. No, it's something that we were told to love and that they were told to love. That it would be a love relationship. Not just one of duty. Not just one of works. Not just one that other people put guilt onto us. But actually a, a reality of this is who I am now. Whatever goes before, whatever the devil tells me, whatever my own conscience tells me, whatever the voices whispering tell me, God tells me this is who I am now. And I'm redeemed. I'm a new person. I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things are made new. Let's declare that the word of God is effective. Let's believe it. Let's allow it to change us. Let's agree with what God says about us. Let's agree with who God says that we are. Wow. We're fellowshipping with the saints. We're seated in heavenly places. We're the church, the pillar and ground of truth. 1 Timothy 3.15 The Bride of Christ, Ephesians 5.22 The Salt of the Earth The Light of the World, Matthew 5 This is who we are. This is who God says we are. And let's never say We're new. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can say that we are under new ownership today because of the cross of Calvary, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, because of the payment that was made on our behalf. Thank you, Lord, that you redeemed us out of our sins, out of our trespasses, out of our iniquity, out of our transgressions, out of the curse of the law, our own bodies, our vanities, whatever it was, Lord. You have redeemed us. You've bought us with a price. Thank you, Lord, that the word of God is effective because of the new management, because of the new ownership, because of the new covenant in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that we would check ourselves, that we would never make the word of God of none effect, that we would never rob the word of God of Price for our sin, that you bought us, that we became your possession, we became your children, we became one with you, Lord, and you put your spirit in us. Lord, we love you, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that it's a love relationship. Thank you, Lord, that it's not one of works, of duty, of law. It's a, a, a love relationship based on your grace. By us mixing faith with the word that we receive and saying this, this word has power to transform me. This word is who is going to define who I am. And this word means I don't live in my old nature anymore. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. And Lord, we ask if there's anybody out there watching, anybody at all who has never experienced what we're talking about today. Them and their Saviour. Lord, we pray that this will be the time when they say, Lord, I know you love me. And I know that there is a barrier in me that kept us apart. My sins, my iniquities, my failings, my transgressions. But Lord, every one of these barriers has been removed by what you did at Calvary. Everything has been paid for. Everything has been dealt with. And I am able to trust you. And accept you as Saviour. And I invite you in. And Lord, I, my response is to mix faith with it. 
and trust you as my Saviour. I love you, Lord. Fill me with your Spirit. Fill me with your life. And reveal your word in your heart to me. In the fullness of its power, help me to understand who you are. Help me to understand who I am in you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, uh, feel free to join with us again. Hope that you were able to find us on this section. But uh, uh, the Lord knows. So take care. God bless. And uh, see you soon.